Stephen Avery saga you won't see in the Netflix series. That's the perspective of journalists who covered Avery for years. Steve Shamraz sat down with two former TMJ4 reporters, and they say the documentary is not the whole story. It's November 2005. While a team of law enforcement searched for the remains of Teresa Halbach, their prime suspect was in the middle of a field in Crivets. When somebody's missing, that takes a, a toll on a family. Talking with today's TMJ4 reporter, Mick Trevi. And we actually flew in Chopper 4 up there to get there and get to the family. Trevi and fellow TMJ4 alum Heather Shannon covered the Avery family saga for years. We'd talked to his mother, we talked to his father, his brothers. We had, we had been in I don't want to use the term embedded, but we had known the family for years. Starting in 2003, when Stephen Avery was released from prison. we got brothers. They watched him go free after 18 years on a wrongful conviction for rape. So when Avery stood in that field and professed his innocence. I got a hunch. Manitowoc County planning it. Trevi heard him out. Were you willing to believe him there? When we interviewed him in 2005 before his arrest, you wanted to take him at his word at that moment just based on the fact that you'd gotten to know him so well in that two years since he'd been released from prison. As Mick and Heather watch the Netflix series Making a Murderer, they not only see themselves, they see the story from a unique perspective. It's familiar, though something is missing. When you try to compress the trial into a short period of time, it's tough because you don't always get the full benefit of seeing all of that scrutiny applied to each piece of the case. We Though the Netflix series devotes three hours to the trial, the series does not Members present all the evidence. You may see the defense ask a question and not see cross. You may see the prosecution ask a question and not see cross. So you're really only getting half of the answer that the witness is giving. Mick and Heather knew the filmmakers were covering this trial and appeared to have a special in with the Averys. They just had access to the family that the traditional media did not. Which resulted in a film with a distinctly pro-Avery perspective, echoing the conspiracy theory the family spoke of from day one. I think the whole family's being targeted because of the Avery name. As reporters, Mick and Heather questioned that theory as they did every piece of this case. Now they question what making a murderer chose to show its audience and what it chose to leave out. I don't know if it was for time reasons or because they didn't think it was important or because it was deliberately left out. We don't know. The family chose to, to tell their story um, to these filmmakers and you know that our role as journalists is a bit different. Now Mick and Heather have opinions about Avery's guilt but they did not want to share them. While they're out of the news business they say it's not their place to judge him guilty or innocent.